Gamers, Nightly here, bringing you Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo, a game developed by Konami in 1991. Blah! I know, lame Dracula impersonation, but I'm gearing up for Halloween, what can I say? The famed vampire slayer Simon Belmont, my favorite Belmont, is back yet again to face the unearthly hordes of Dracula and his minions. Now, Simon's quest this time is incredibly epic, and probably one of the toughest quests that Simon will ever endure ever again. Now, the story for Castlevania is pretty much the same. Dracula is killed by a Belmont every 100 years, and he comes back when good is weakened around the world, although how that really works, I don't really know. Also, which is confusing, during this whole intro that you're seeing right here, the story indicates that Simon is gearing up to face Dracula again putting Simon probably about two or three hundred years old, which would go with uh, Simon's quest when, after Castlevania I, Simon defeated him and Dracula cursed him and Simon could not die. So Simon set off and got Dracula's body parts, burned them, and then the curse was broken. But, apparently Simon was blessed with long life and ended up fighting Dracula three or four times. Controls for this game are pretty much the same as every Castlevania game at that time or before that. Your whip is your Y, A, or B button, depending on what your control scheme is. And your jump is either B, A, again, what, whatever you're using. If you're using the classic controller on the Nintendo Wii, then it would be the B button. Uh, regular Super Nintendo, B, A, or B. There's also a crouch mechanic in this game, which is really good. And also, the whip has so many uses, like swinging from chandeliers or swinging from those little ring things. It's a swinging time when you're in Belmont. Also, the whip can be used in numerous directions. You can jump and use it, you can point it in any direction, and the whip is pretty cool in this game. But there is a wimpy use for it. You hold in the Y button, or whatever buttons your whip, and then you just swing it around like a little Nancy man. It's very wimpy, and it made Simon look like a dork, actually. On top of that, the whip could also be used to block fireballs from either bosses or obstacles that were coming at Simon, which was so very cool. The uh, sub-weapons are back as well. The stopwatch, the um, holy water, the axes, which are one of my favorites, and the all-time best weapon, the holy cross, which is just explains itself right here. It is just so cool. And when you get three of them, wow. Um, the American and the Japanese version, it's either a crucifix or a Bible that's like your ultimate destroyer thing. Which is kind of cool, I guess. Alright, bad aspect of this game. If you've been watching some of my older Castlevania... Well, my other Castlevania review, I hated the Medusa heads with the utmost passion for living. And guess what? I still hate them. I, I don't care if they are better drawn or better detailed, it's the same thing. It's the same mechanic. These little annoying obstacles are what end up killing you. Simon can verse Axe Knights, he can survive Medusa Heads, he can survive the Hydra, he can survive the creature, and what kills him? A bat, or a book, or a little eye guy, or wait, let's add a block. I mean, come on. Alright, good aspect of this game. I didn't really talk about the level design too much, but this is a beautifully designed game. Super Castlevania, the developers just did everything about this game incredibly well. It is a beautiful game to look at, and it still stands the test of time. Like, replaying it uh, just this past week was just a great experience. Clock Tower is one of my favorite levels. It's, it's just a pretty game, and the bosses! The bosses are incredibly awesome! With the exception of maybe a couple, but look at Death's entrance right there! And he throws his scythe at you? How cool is that? Or what about walking to Dracula's lair with the lights lighting up as you walk? The boss battle with Dracula himself is much better. He doesn't turn into that nasty creature. And the ending for when you defeat Dracula, it's like something out of Bram Stoker, the way the light comes in and destroys him and stuff. I mean, wow! Such a great ending to a great epic game. Of course, the castle disappears like in the first one. Anyway, this was an awesome game. I gave this game a 9 out of 10. Check out my other reviews. You guys have a great night. That 
That's my cue. 